Welcome to the 36th series, everyone. Wow, 36. That's three years of series, effectively, uh, which is absolutely wild. So thank you for everybody that stuck with us for this time. This series, uh, we are going to be doing something a little different than normal. Amelia is currently rushing to move, so this series will actually be just my dulcet tones joined by the incomparable Adira Slattery, member of the One Shot Podcast Network and creator of some really great games, including the one that we are covering today. You are in for a treat as we cover Tension, a game of murder, intrigue, and romance. But before we get to that, just a few announcements. First up, join me again this coming Friday as we near the end of our use of the horror module in my A Tale of Twinkle and Awe campaign uh, using Chimera. We will be playing at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, as usual, at twitch.chimera.games. If you would like to check out some other cool things, absolutely check out Losers A Love Story, a dramatic retelling of Stephen King's It using Monster of the Week and Christine Priebus's supplement Back to Dairy on the A Horror Borealis feed. I am having a blast doing the sound design for it, and it is exquisite, if I do say so myself. It's also extremely dark and very adult-oriented, so please listen with care if you do check it out. Also, check out the various places where you can leave us reviews. I'm guessing Apple isn't in any rush to make their review process for podcasts any easier, but you can also leave reviews on Podchaser, Stitcher, and a variety of other places that we should be able to see. They absolutely help us out and really brighten up our days every time we get one. Plus, they help more people find the show. If you've already left a review, please chat about us online. We would love hearing our audience converse amongst themselves. Uh, we truly wish we had more time and brain energy to curate more fun things to do with the audience, like the C3 Friday Forge and C3 Tuesday team-ups, but we're running pretty close on fumes right now, so perhaps someday, when life settles down a bit, uh, we'll be able to work on that more. For now, uh, at us on Twitter, at CreationCast, and we're likely to respond. For now, I don't think we have any other announcements, so please get ready to enjoy learning about this pretty amazing two-player game. Part 1 sets up something remarkable in Part 2, and that sets us up for a mind-bending direction for our fanfic in Part 3, so absolutely stay tuned. Enjoy the show, everyone. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia is actually unable to join us due to uh, all sorts of life happening currently right now at her. Uh, but I am here, and I am excited to welcome back Adira Slattery, designer of the game we are covering today, Tension, a queer cat and mouse romp for two players. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, Adira. We're really excited to have you back here with us. Yeah, really excited to be here on the guest side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you were uh, uh, co-host uh, filling in for Amelia for the Hearts of Wu Lin series, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, fantastic series. I love that. 
uh, that game. So if you haven't uh, heard that one yet, go check it out. Uh, it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But now as a guest, uh, can you tell us a bit more about yourself, uh, where we can find you online and any projects that you're currently involved in? Yeah. Hi. So I'm Adira Slattery. Uh, you can find me online uh, as at Adira Slattery on Twitter, uh, or you can get my games at adira.itch.io. I am uh, bringing tension to Kickstarter uh, that will be launching February 14th, uh, assuming everything goes well. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise, uh, I am making games, uh, writing poetry, being on podcasts every once in a while. Very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. And if everything goes well, this will uh, be the first episode releasing on the 1st of February. So... Uh, by the time the series finishes, uh, that Kickstarter should be live. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. In the future, if you're listening to this and it's way past this Kickstarter has done, just Google Adira Slattery and you'll figure out whatever I'm doing. Exactly. <laughs> you're, the, you're the only one as far as I remember. Yeah. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so wild. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get into this, uh, and we will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? So what sort of setting uh, and experience are we talking about for Tension? So Tension is uh, a game that is about uh, uh, the sort of like cat and mouse ideas uh, uh, the sort of queer thoughts on that are really exemplified and typified in media like Killing Eve and Hannibal. Uh, and tension sort of defaults to a modern day setting, but uh, you could run it in any sort of environment that you really wanted to, which is very minor mm. tweaks. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of the like uh, detective murder type. Uh, dynamics from what I understand of those uh, two shows. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is an investigator and a killer uh, and they are uh, sort of intrinsically drawn to each other. Oh, uh, nice. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do we need to play this game then? Uh, all you need to play this game is a deck of tarot cards. It's Ooh. totally diceless. Okay. Um, yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I will have questions about that as we go, I'm sure. Awesome. Um, so what kind of stories and themes then is this game meant to explore? Yeah, uh, this game is meant to explore themes around uh, like queer uh, romance uh, uh, and uh, social transgression and uh, redemption and temptation and uh, just a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> awesome. like, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good time. Nice. And then, uh, then what do, what do characters do then in this game? Uh, in this game, the characters, uh, uh, do a number of things. Um, they yearn, uh, they look up, uh, things about each other. They chase after each other. Uh, uh, they kill people. Um, uh, they might kiss. They might well, do one, a lot more than hope. kiss. One would hope. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what would you say is one of the most unique things about uh, Tension? Yeah. Uh, so I think one of the more unique things about Tension is the sort of uh, uh, scene structure using uh, tarot cards uh, through this sort of like pared down... Uh, no dice, no master sort of style. Um, hmm. uh, a lot of inspirations for this game uh, pull from uh, Dark Sentencer by Marn, uh, uh, Oathbreakers by uh, Jamila Najati, uh, Sleepaway by J Dragon. Hmm. Um, and it is really sort of all about like pulling you through this story. Um while at the same time, uh, there are 22 characters. <laughs> hmm. That's what intrigued me the most about when you were uh, kind of uh, coming at us with this. Uh, I think you said, yeah, we're going to create 
uh, two characters and then 20 more characters altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's one character for every single major arcana in the Terra. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. very cool. I, I'm very excited to get to, to that. My yeah. goodness. Um, so normally we go into the history of the game, but this game's pretty new. Mm -hmm. Um, where did the idea for this game come from? Um, so in the most recent season of Killing Eve, uh, there's a scene where the two main characters get into a fight on a bus, uh, and then, uh, spoilers uh, uh for if you haven't watched killing eve sk skip ahead just a little bit they then make out after punching each other um and uh it was very gay um and i was just like screaming with all of that energy and i paused the show <laughs> and i started writing <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah, I, I love those moments when inspiration just hits and and you just have to get it down on paper right away. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds really uh, amazing when that happens. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so some of the basic terms and concepts that we'll need to cover before we uh, actually go into this game. Mm -hmm. um, I am very unknowledgeable Mm. Uh, about uh, almost anything tarot. Yeah. Um, I understand there are uh, arcanas. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've got a little bit almost of the feel from uh, Campaign Skyjacks with the Luminaries. Yes. Almost. Mm -hmm. it, fe it feels kind of like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's as far as my knowledge goes. Mm. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you uh, give me a little... Uh, like basic 101 on what tarot is yeah yeah so uh tarot is a, a, a style of playing card um that uh, uh is a couple hundred years old um and it was first used to play a number of trick-taking games uh and other things and then started to uh become used uh for divinatory fashions mm -hmm. uh, and it gained the sort of occult association that uh, many people have with it today uh, especially in the u.s mm -hmm. and uh, tarot is a 78 i think 78 card deck um where there are the four main suits uh that make up the minor arcana uh mm -hmm. in your sort of traditional tarot deck their swords, uh, wands, coins or uh, pentacles and uh, cups or, or chalices. And then there are the uh, 22 uh, major arcana, uh, which were sort of initially a uh, sort of uh, a, a trump suit, um, if you're familiar with that sort of terminology in, in other trick taking games like bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the major arcana have uh, like very discreet names and uh, a wide variety of, of symbolism in there. Mm -hmm. And the minor arcana have a lot of symbolism in there too. Uh, but uh, when it comes to tension, we're treating it as another game object. Okay. So the minor arcana cards, you can play them to do specific sorts of moves. Like if you do the crescendo move with a wand, you'll, sort of imbue these specific sorts of emotions into a scene mm. uh, than if you did it with a sword where it would be a lot more like uh, a conflict. Okay. Yeah. Um, which there's a, a list of all of those emotional associations in, yeah. in the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it also is a Oracle deck. Um, mm. There, there are a lot of uh, Oracle decks being done in, and like uh, played around with in really cool ways recently in indie tabletop design playing around with tarot playing around with uh spindle wheel which mm -hmm. is a fabulous oracle deck uh playing around with even just like dixit cards or mm -hmm. cards from the board game mysterium can be used in a similar sort of way where you're just uh, interpreting oh, yeah. the sort of like uh, uh resonance from the images and things like that mm -hmm. so it sort of pulls sort of double duty okay because the cards themselves can like prompt you based off of 
the images, the name, whatever associations you're bringing into it. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that depending on the sort of tarot deck you go and decide to play tension with, it can feel very different. Like my, my spouse has hmm. this uh, like vaporwave tarot deck. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. And so playing tension with that deck would feel different. Yeah. Yeah. Do you kind of draw from the imagery on the cards then mm-hmm. to, to kind of get a feel for what's going on in the scene and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Very nice. As you're, as you're playing, uh, there's a, a central path of seven cards face down and you're flipping them up and the cards like prompt you for the beginning position of a scene. And you can either go off little examples in the uh, uh, book or you can just base it entirely off of the art or yeah. whatever association. Like uh, different people have a lot of personal associations with different cards. Like mm-hmm. you might be somebody who is like, oh, the five of swords. I really care about that card for for some reason. Maybe you really liked it from a playthrough of the game persona. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe you associate it with a specific person in your life Mm -hmm. um and so that can pull all this other sort of meaning into the game oh very cool Mm -hmm. yeah i've seen a lot of different uh tarot card decks um i've got a lot of friends online that like oh i got a new deck and they show pictures of it and Mm -hmm. the the artwork on some of these is so so phenomenal and um i can imagine that that will greatly spark the imagination mm-hmm. uh, during those scenes, which is really cool. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's interesting. You could have the same setup, but then a completely different deck and then play through completely differently. Yep. Uh, yeah. Which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So, so it sounds like we need to invest in some tarot decks here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the other nice thing about tension as well is that since it's not just uh, designed for one shot play, like many two player games mm-hmm. are, you can, if you wanted to use different decks across different multiple games of a campaign. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I didn't even, I didn't even think of that as an option. That's very cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, now we, we keep mentioning that this is a two player game, but there's also a three player option, right? Uh, yes. and that, mm-hmm. that's where the ensemble comes in. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that role? Yeah. So the two player game has a lot of sort of like heavy lifting in, uh, sort of juggling all of these different characters. Um, so if you want to play with three players, there is the ensemble, which somebody can come into and instead of sort of embodying one of the two main characters, they play a supporting role, uh, bouncing around between the uh, 20 different supporting characters and embodying them as they get introduced and leading flashbacks about them after they've died mm. and things like that. Uh, it's 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 really fun. I like playing the ensemble a bunch, um, mm. but I also just like watching people play romance games. So yeah. that's neat. <laughs> um, yeah. If, if you're somebody who is more used to like a, a GM role in a, mm. in a more traditional game, you'd probably feel a little more comfortable with the ensemble. There's a lot of stuff you can do to make it sort of a quasi GM if, if you want to. Mm. Um, but uh, as, as designed, uh, the game is uh, 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 very GM full. There's, there's no, mm-hmm. everyone is equally a GM. Very cool. Yeah. I, I like the term GM full versus GM less because um, mm-hmm. a, a lot of games will, will go with the GM less moniker, uh, kind of saying that it, it, it almost feels like it's anarchy at mm. that point. <laughs> <laughs> Anarchy's fun sometimes. I, it is, um, uh, especially in a game like Fiasco and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but GM full is is an interesting uh, description because it's kind of like you're both uh the 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 masters of the the game at that point uh yeah. you know crafting the story together mm-hmm. uh in a in a full way instead of just like okay what are we going to do next sort of way mm-hmm. that's very cool all right is there anything else that uh we want to say before we hop into character creation then oh um i guess there is one thing that i want to say yeah. uh which is when we talk about character creation and we go through creating all of the characters, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to say the word orbiting characters a lot. Oh, okay. Those 20 other characters that aren't the main characters, those are the orbiting characters. They all have an orbit 
that associates them with the main characters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we should be all set. Uh, should we make some people? Yeah. All right. Let's make some people. Mm -hmm. Let's make some people. All right. What do we do? I've got the uh, I've got the document somewhere here. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, first thing to do is yes. to determine who is the investigator and who is the killer. Okay, I have uh, zero preference at this point. I'm um, fine. I'm fine going against type and being the killer. Um, I'm fine going with type and being the investigator. Hmm. Can, you can make me work out my brain muscles by going with the killer if you want. Yeah, let's make you work out. Be the killer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to be the killer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's two. That's two series in a row where I've been the villain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do we need to do now? So um, the killer and the investigator have uh, fairly uh, simple character sheets. Um, there aren't any like move options that you pick from. Uh, uh, characters all have the same sort of stuff. Uh, what you do is you pick a number of different lists that sort of define and specify uh, your character. Uh, for instance, uh, the killer has a type um, and the investigator has a profession. Both of them have looks. Uh, okay. Things like that. So uh, you have your three lists right there. Mm -hmm. Um how about we walk through your lists and then okay. we'll walk through mine. All right. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. So okay. start with the type. There are four different types listed. You can pick one or write your own. Uh, this is sort of the, the general uh, milieu of, of your killer. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Whether they are professional, wild, uh, driven, or are doing this for pleasure. Okay. So this is... Uh this is like, I, I am a certain type of killer and this is that, mm -hmm. um, hmm, I'm kind of, uh, between professional and pleasure. Mm. Um, those are definitely the two most common ones people pick. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can imagine. Um, mm -hmm. oh boy. Although driven could be interesting. Um, I think, you know, I think I'm going to go with driven. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Driven's super neat because it, it brings a lot of different associations in there because, like, you have a drive, right? Yeah. So. Like, it sounds like I'm doing this for a reason, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm, not just, I'm not just doing this for fun or for money. I'm, I'm doing it because there's a purpose behind it. And I, I, I like that uh, angle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, driven is secretly one of my favorite things to pick as the killer. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got type... Uh, driven now i have a look to choose from yeah um, uh, so it says pick a few right mm -hmm. yeah there's uh, like 12 options yeah so just some of the options uh here bright colors piercing eyes uh tailored suit fun socks i like that one uh expensive phone and easy laugh those sort of things yeah um and and I guess it's good to note here that we could write our own if we wanted to as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think um uh, for look, um, you know what I'm gonna go with an easy laugh, uh, because that makes them sound a little personable. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's always kind of creepy from coming from a, a killer. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> tailored suit. Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I have to remember that this is a this is a romance game. Mm. Uh, so I want to pick things that are uh, that are well, pretty much all of them are that way, right? Except yeah. for maybe hidden knives. <laughs> <laughs> the, the killer is very much written as a peacock. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go then with, um, oh, uh, piercing eyes. Uh, and one more. One more would be good. You were a fan of fun socks earlier. I was. I, I'm going to pick fun socks. Fun socks, fun socks. Fun socks. All right. And then the last option that you pick for the killer is uh, your pattern. Uh, so this is uh, the things that uh, are like your calling card. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So then, that, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So they've got like playing cards, flowers, music, stickers, puzzle pieces, graffiti, or pick your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would my character's calling card be? Ooh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to make my own. Yeah. Um, it's a, uh, a flash drive, uh, with a cryptic video on it. Ooh, cryptic video. Neat. Yeah. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if you look on the next page that has your, uh, things that you can always do and things that you can do by discarding a card from your hand, because in play you'll have, uh, cards in your hand that you're discarding to enact different things as the story is moving along. Yeah. And then you have a few questions that you use to check in with yourself after scenes. And if you see, there's a whole big section about a bunch of different relationships. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right now we are going to leave that blank. Oh, good. Cause <laughs> when I first was looking through this, I was like, okay, relationships, uh, NPCs. Oh wait, these are, these are arcana. Okay. And then it says you question mark with a box next to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that will come into play later. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, now, uh, in the meantime, though, uh, what are your character's name and pronouns? Ooh, um, name. That's going to be the tough part, I think. Uh, uh, pro pronouns, um, I'm thinking she, her. All right. Okay. Name. A common thing people do with the killer uh, is go with a, a pseudonym. Okay. Or like a title or whatever. I'm going to go with um, Alexa. And and say that the the voice in all of the videos is Alexa's <laughs> the, voice. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So let's talk about the investigator now. Yeah. So the investigator has a profession. They're a journalist, a private eye, a special agent, or a consultant. Uh, if you notice, uh, none of those say cop. Mm -hmm. uh, all cops are bastards. <laughs> uh. So I'm going to make a journalist. Uh, and then for my look, uh, there's, these options are, are very different from uh, the killer. We have uh, dirty glasses, chewed pens, a uh, large cup of coffee, uh, bed head, a nervous smile, uh, empty pill bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to do leather jacket. Make him a little cool. Mm -hmm. Um, dirty glasses, uh, chewed pens, mm. and uh, empty pill bottles. Awesome. And then, yes. as the investigator, I have an obsession, um, uh, which is once again, pick one or write your own. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I have serial killers, grisly accidents, mystery novels, murder weapons, funerals, or photography. Mm. Um, and... Uh, Photography is sort of the obvious one to go for with journalists, yeah. uh, which is why I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to do uh, Grisly Accidents. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and then my character's name and pronouns. Uh, let's go with, let's go with Heather. Also she, her. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This game is queer, so we're going to be lesbians, damn it. Absolutely. All right. So uh, the next thing that we do uh, is we make 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, each of us has a little worksheet uh, of uh, the different major arcana. Um, they have a little uh, description for that major arcana. Uh, a little list of uh, options for orbits mm -hmm. uh, and a relationship field. Um, if you notice, looking at the worksheet, every single one has a little you option. That's yeah. because before we make these characters, each of us is going to pick one of the major arcana to mm. further define our character. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I need to know anything about the major arcana to pick one other than mm. the name? Nope. Uh, awesome. There's 
a sort of association under it. Uh, so like, for instance, one of your options is the chariot. Mm -hmm. uh, they are courageous and careless. Uh, so that would uh -huh. imply that your character is courageous, but careless. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So there's a major arcana worksheet um, that has all of this kind of uh, built out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, li I like how there's a dichotomy between all of them. Between this is good, but you're, you know, this is also kind of not so good in a lot of situations. Yeah. Part of the interesting stuff with tarot is that there are dual meanings to uh, the cards when you deal with uh, uh, they when they get their inverted forms. Mm -hmm. um, and now, the game for mechanical simplicity uh, doesn't care which way up or down the cards are. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it still is able to pull in a lot of that duality here. Nice. Hmm. All right. I think I know which one I'm going to go with for myself then. All right. Which one are you going with? I'm going to go with the tower. The tower. A yes. A calamity that brings awakening. <sighs> now, the tower has an association among many people who like tarot as like the evilest card. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going against type here. Uh, I don't think it is, um, mm. but it is a, a good meme. Um, it's funny because um, I'm kind of building this character to be the hero of their own story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, part of the sort of foundation uh, uh, of uh, uh, tension is is being able to s empathize and, and sympathize with uh, a, a mass murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it, it makes sense that you'd be drawn towards, uh, making them the hero of their own story. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're the hero of more than their own story. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. So I've got the tower, um, as myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would check you for that one, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Let me see if I can, uh, finagle my, uh, PDF thing to... Uh, check a box. The first thing uh, stretch goal wise for the Kickstarter is uh, nicer form fillable <laughs> sheets for all of this <laughs> to facilitate remote play. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good thing. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I have a little check mark uh, option though in my in my Adobe tools. Um, mm. So I'm just going to do that. That sounds pretty good. Awesome. Well, um, I picked the moon for myself. Uh, mysterious even to themselves. Ooh. Cool. So the next thing we would do is if we were in the same place playing physically, mm -hmm. we would take the major arcana, split them into two decks of 11 cards based off of this split here, yeah. and then draw one card from each deck, flipping them up, creating pairs. Oh, OK. Of one of my cards and one of your cards. Yeah. Sort of back, forth, back, forth. And then okay. we would build relationships between those people. And that's the order we'd also make these characters in. Nice. Um, I, in sort of uh, uh, previous to the recording, drew all those pairs together for us. <laughs> <laughs> Through the magic of television. Yeah. So we can just sort of <laughs> skip the, the, the shuffling and drawing card step and just sort of go down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where we pull the tarot cards out of the oven uh, mm -hmm. with our bare hands. Yeah. Because so, it's cold and old. <laughs> ah, cooking shows. <laughs> the first um, uh, pair that we have is Judgment and the Emperor. So Ooh. the Emperor is one of mine and Judgment is one of yours. So how this works uh, is uh, each of us picks from either one of the three orbits listed there or writing our own. Uh, and then we come up with a relationship together of these two characters. Okay. So, for instance, I have my three options for the emperor, authority, and all its overreaches are the feds, my boss's boss, or a consultant. Hmm. And uh, for judgment, I have a double agent, cam girl, and clueless friend. Mm hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, I am going to pick. Uh, my favorite option for the emperor, which is boss's boss. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. And I'm going to pick, um, cause I think this would be fun. A clueless friend. 
clueless friend. Awesome. So uh, now we uh, talk through what we think my boss's boss and your clueless friend, what their relationship is. Um, uh, are they uh, related? Are they uh, dating? Are they married? Um, does your clueless friend uh, sit my boss's boss, do- boss's boss's dog? Um, any of those sorts of things. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, this is okay. So your boss's boss, um, and my clue, this friend, mm-hmm. um, let's say that my, my clueless friend, um, gosh, gotta be like, uh, something mundane, right? Mm, yeah. Like they know each other. Um, you know, let's let's just go uh, a little nerdy here and say that uh, they they role play together. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would put in the relationship slot under the emperor that they're an RP buddy with judgment. Um, uh, and uh, we can also come up with names and pronouns for uh, these people now, uh, or we can come up with them. You can also come up with them later during play. It's basically just sort of what you decide might be easier for, uh, continued like understanding of these characters, because while the characters might not be showing up in every scene, they are sort of in the world and you have this association to them, right? Yeah. Uh, like I I have some options around having uh, siblings, and so it might be good to name those siblings if I want to be able to talk about, oh, yeah, off off screen. Oh, I was on the phone with with James, my younger brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. OK, um, let's go ahead and name these uh, folks and, and and see what we get. Sounds good. I know I know uh, Amelia is probably listening to this and thanking, you know, everything to not be here naming 20 NPCs. <laughs> Well, uh, my boss's boss is going to be named James Belkin uh, and uses he, him pronouns because Mr. Belkin is just Mm -hmm. imposing and mean. Um, Okay. And then uh, my clueless friend, uh, let's see. I don't know why Wachowski keeps getting in my head. Sure. Why not? Uh, Jennifer Wachowski. There we go. Uh, She, her. Uh, she plays a healer uh, a lot, uh, which I find very ironic uh, for me being the killer. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So very cool. Next, we have uh, the devil and the lovers. Well, we've got four characters done and 18 to go next episode. Uh, things get pretty wild as we explore one of the quickest and most in-depth relationship systems I've been able to experience uh, coming up next episode. So buckle up for next week. In the meantime, let's wrap things up this week with our calls to action. First, check out my Chimera stream this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time at twitch.chimera.games. It's going to be an interesting one, I think, where the group gets to experience a fear akin to the first Alien movie. So, uh, spoilers for my players if they are listening. Uh, or teasers, I guess. Secondly, please leave a rating and review for us. Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, etc. They all help us out in the rankings and really give our brains and hearts a boost of warmth on these cold Wisconsin days. Uh, So definitely help us out there if you could, please. And remember, Amelia will be out for the remainder of this series, but I will see if I can record one of these cold opens with her sometime after she's done moving. Uh, We shall see. In the meantime, let's wind things down here get to the credits and that sweet show blurb music. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time.
Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like A Horror Borealis. A Horror Borealis is an actual play Monster of the Week podcast set in the 1990s in the fictional town of Revenant, Alaska, just south of the nation's least visited national park and way north of everything else. A reclusive small game hunter with a magical secret, a young anarchist librarian with a passion for conspiracy theory, and a sensible park ranger with a strong local book club following find themselves pulled together by common threads woven mysteriously into their past when monsters begin plaguing their tiny community. But they soon discover the things they're fighting run much deeper and much closer to home. Tune in for a story about identity, empathy, community, mental illness, and healing, and stay for the beloved local diner.